Hello, hello, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, it is us once again. We've been on quite a bit in the last week and a half, but here we are again. Look, Jose Armando with a smirk, almost a smile. And of course, if you're seeing this or if you're hearing this, then you know I am your other co-host, Franco Panizo, back for a Monday episode of Miami Total Football Radio, the show ahead of Wednesday's big match for Inter-Miami. One of the biggest in team history against Monterrey down in Mexico. We will talk about all of the angles leading into this game. because There's a lot to talk about, Jose. But we're going to do it in short time. Short time. We're going to do it in shorter than usual time. Less than an hour and ten minutes today. You wait and see. But if you guys are new or if you're old, please leave us a review, a like, a share, a comment, a subscribe. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a review, a written review, getting closer and closer, almost there. As soon as we get to that number, I will stop for a while asking for the reviews. But we're ready. We're very, very close. Anyway, Jose, enough with the pleasantries. How are you doing today, sir? I'm nice good. Show. I'm good. Yeah, just to make it clear, uh, I'm a um, Harry Potter expert. <laughs> yes. Wow. You're very proud of that. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm a, I'm a Harry Potter expert. Andre is not gonna be happy about me saying that, but yeah, she got this shirt for me. I'm lying. I had no idea what this means or anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm have good. You, have you been a good husband? Did Andrea make you watch all of the movies? Um. Well, she tried. I'm still. I I haven't finished the first one because I usually fall asleep around the 15th minute mark, some somewhere around that. So I always watch the first. 15 minutes and then I have seen all of the original Harry Potter series and not by choice. My ex-girlfriend, when I moved to New Jersey, she came to visit me for two weeks. We were doing long distance dating. And while we were there for two weeks, we watched, she loved Harry Potter. We watched all seven movies. I think it's seven at that time. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was, uh, not my not my favorite movie series that I've ever seen. I'll just I'll just I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Um, anyway, all right. Also, we've got a big game to talk about. We'll talk yeah. about the most recent match as well because obviously why? Well, because Lionel Messi made his return. He's back. We can talk about that, but I mean, Messi regresó, jugó, goleó, metió un gol. Um, so that's just. I mean, we're gonna be looking forward, but we have to look back to look forward because we have to things we have to there's things that happen over the weekend that implicate what will happen on wednesday Miss. and we'll start there it was messi. an interesting lineup it was a very interesting lineup we start we're gonna start with messi now you want to talk about the lineup you see you see you want to talk about the game <laughs> you want to talk about the lineup I, I i remember what i wanted to say about that lineup <laughs> dos so, knows yeah. in the comment section mess says messi is back and so am yeah. i oh well Hi, what's up, Dos Nos? It's been a while since we've seen you in here. Possum in the comment section again with Hype AF. Hype AF. We already know what AF stands for. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. By the way, look, I got my Eclipse sunglasses on here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, they're actually Oakley's. It didn't actually uh, didn't work for the solar eclipse, but I'm in, I'm in spirit. I'm in theme. Um, anyway, I got Pranko Penizo from Endo in the comment section. It's been a while since I've heard that name. Been a while. Um, anyway, all right. So Messi made his return. Regresó de su lesión. He returned from injury. 45 minute substitute appearance in the two to two draw with the Colorado Rapids at home on Saturday night. Daddy at Yankee Chase Stadium. Daddy Yankee was in the house. I know you were very excited about that. Well, yes, obviously. I mean, there are only two reggaetoneros in the world, and one of them was there. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyway, we're not we're not gonna have reggaeton debates here. Uh, anyway, so speaking the truth, Inter Miami two to two draw, but Messi was the big talking point. His return during his forty five minute spell, he looked pretty sharp. The team looked better after his insertion into the game. They actually were trailing when he entered the game at halftime, one zero. Came back, took a two to one lead, and then obviously they gave up a late goal to split the points with the Rapids. Four games now across all competitions that Inter-Miami is winless in. 
They take that run of form into Mexico on Wednesday night where Messi figures to start, right? We expect Messi to start. Is that correct, Jose? Do you share that sentiment? Lionel Messi will start on Wednesday night in the decisive do-or-die winner-go-home match for Inter Miami. They need at least two goals. They need a win. Yes. I, I expect him I expect him to start um although it's 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 gonna be important the next training session whether i think it will happen tomorrow in in monterrey i i i i would doubt that they did a lot today here um because he he only has one full training session you know since um uh, he he came back which it did happen on friday so Um, you know, unless the recovery didn't go well, which I don't expect that to happen because he only played for like 45 minutes, so he should be fine. Um, training sessions are limited just because there's not enough time tomorrow's travel day. And, um, I don't know how much that the wants to do tomorrow. So I expect him to play and I expect him to start. I expect him to start. Will he play 90 minutes though? Unlikely, right? Um I would expect him to play 90 minutes based on this. I don't think it's going to be a game that Inter Miami will feel comfortable taking him out around the 60 60th minute mark because I don't think everything is going to be settled by that point. You know, if Inter Miami is out of things and you know they're completely done then maybe i can see it although it's it's not going to be a good look to take him out just practically giving up so i actually expect him to play 90 minutes but i don't expect him to be um overly impressive after the 70th minute mark per se um what i heard over the weekend from a lot of people was that he was exhausted by the end of the game he was breathing heavily um so of course he's not 90 minute ready but you rather have messi at 15 than i don't want to name names but you know any other attacking player on the roster right i think we all agree on that you you hope for uh for a for a free kick you hope for uh, a good pass and assist you know You just want to have him on the field. And I don't think this is a game that will be decided early. I think it's going to go down to the last 10 to 15 minutes. And you want Messi on the field for that. I I was going to say I don't agree that he plays the 90 minutes. But I think... I make sense, huh? Because, look, I mean, obviously you don't want to Stay risk him. You don't, want to risk, you don't want to risk him getting injured again, right? There's a bigger... Well, you know, what? There's, there's still other games to be played Kansas here. Kansas City? There's other games to be played. It's not just about one match. Now, this is the most important competition for Inter Miami this year, according to Tata Martino and Co. And, well, you know. Well, let's go to America, yes. They need, talk to them for Inter Miami. Inter Miami. No. Uh, and, you know, look, they, they have to win. Right? They have to win. So, yes, do you want to leave him on in the last 20, 30 minutes, even if he's not fully fit? Because he might be able to create something for you, whether it's like you said, a set piece, whether it's, you know, he's not going to defend. He doesn't defend a whole lot as is, although in this last game, he did do some nice defending, including one one nice slide tackle to win a ball back and, and get possession back for Inter Miami. Uh, but normally he doesn't do a whole lot of defending. I imagine even more so there will be more of the walking around that we've seen at times from him if, if he plays the full 90, which might be the gamble that they have to take in order to try to get the goals that they need in this game because clearly he's he's got the quality to make it to make something happen in, in one play whether it's with a pass whether it's with a shot dribble free kick corner kick so yeah i think you know that i think about it more i do think he might go the distance in this one i just like you said i think he'll his impact will likely fade as the game progresses and it's a matter of him and the team being smart about how he effectively uses his energy over the course of the 90 minutes. I mean, if, if the game ends up in a, in a stalemate, right, if they end up tying the score on aggregate, then curious to see if, yeah. he can, if he can play extra time or not. 
That would be interesting. That would be interesting. And, you know, there, there can be, you know, another approach to this and, you know, maybe um, that uh, thinks about it this way, you know, if it's not ready for, um, for a full 90 minutes and you don't want to take that risk, then why don't you bring him in at halftime and, you know, take a gamble and with, you know, whatever happens in the, in the first half. Um, you never know. I mean, Inter Miami, you know, they still have Luis Suarez. And 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 listen, there's 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 an interesting atmosphere around this game. There's an interesting atmosphere around this game, and maybe something that um, that will bring you know the the uh, Cuatro Fantásticos back to you know I don't want to say the Champions League level, but you know they they are facing some adversity which they haven't before um, because league's cup nobody expected them to win um, playoffs last year you know it, it was hard to get in and I think this series against Monterrey because of everything that's happened outside the field off the field I think brings an element a little bit more to what they were used to before they arrived here in MLS. So I think you know I I definitely think that they need Messi to 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 move on, but I would trust Luis Suarez in a, in a, in the first forty five minutes. You know if if that that's what going to, that's what going to um, work uh, better for Messi for him to play uh, at, at his highest level for forty five minutes and maybe try to close the deal. I wouldn't be in total disagreement with that. But I mean, we fully expect that it's going to be a full strength lineup on Wednesday, right? It's a do or die game, yeah, and yeah. as you mentioned, as you alluded to, as you hinted at, the team that played on Saturday night in the home game in the well, in the MLS season, well, it was what? What would you call it? Inter Miami C team, maybe? I mean, um, well, it wasn't I, the B team. I don't think I you would call it the B team. I don't have a problem with the players that Tata chose. I don't have a problem with it. Um, and, and I think they competed well against Colorado Rapids, which, you know, should be a little bit disappointing if you're a Colorado Rapids fan, but I doubt that any Colorado Rapids will be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think he had the right players on the field, but it was just a horrible setup in the first half. It was Horrible. I mean, he had the players to play 5 3 2 or 3 5 2, however you want to call it. But just having David Ruiz as a right back, Borgeling as a right wing back, I mean, it makes no sense at all. No, 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 he wasn't playing right wing back, right winger. Borgeling was right winger. Playing yes, playing right winger. winger. Sorry. Yeah, right winger. So, I mean, it makes no sense. You had the opportunity to finally, finally let Borgelin play in his position alongside Campana, and here comes Tata with a four-three-three. I couldn't understand what he was trying to do. I don't think it worked. I don't think it worked. Yes, they competed well because you know most of the players on the field wanted to play for minutes. You know they want to be impressive, and the effort was there. But you know a different formation could have helped them so much more. That is, I have no doubt about. It. See how you see how you're looking back. See how you didn't want to look back, but now you're looking back. You see, you see how you're doing that. Uh, yeah, that's that's I how think, big a disappointment was that the you know in that first half. So I'm gonna jump around here. We're just gonna skip around before we go back to the matchup on Wednesday. There's been quite a bit of criticism for Tata Martino as of late. Team's not winning. Performances have been. Up and down. Obviously, there's reasons for these things that don't just point the finger at Tata. It's not just Tata's fault or Tata's responsibility. But he is the head coach. He does bear that burden of getting results regardless of who's available and who's not. How critical are you of Tata Martino during this stretch? Is he the biggest reason why this team, as of late, has not been performing well? Or do you chalk it up to other things like Injuries? Do you chalk it up to just how much attention is being put into this quarterfinal series in the Concacaf Champions Cup? I mean, what 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 do you chalk it up to mostly? 
No, I think injuries are a factor. You know, injuries are a factor. I, I disagree with what his with his tactical setup against Colorado in the first half. Um, obviously, when Messi comes on, he changes everything. And, you know, we talked about this, I think, with Noah Allen um, after the game. And, and he did acknowledge that, yes, they are a completely different team. And they need to find a way to close the gap because, you know, it's it's significant. But I don't think it's everything is on Tata. I get frustrated with Tata you know, when he makes um, bad decisions, just like any any other coach. But I think this would be a different team if if Faku was available, if Benha was available. I think those two players in particular can can provide something else than what they have right now. Um, so I don't think it's entirely on Tata, but he carries some of the responsibility. I mean, he. You know he makes some mistakes, and um, and, and you know I if we're gonna blame Tata, I think we have to blame as well um, Chris Anderson because uh, I think they should have done a, a, a much better job into um, building a team that was ready to to play and to compete without Messi because you have Suarez. You it, it's not like you don't have a, a, a top goal scorer. You have Suarez, so. Um, what I saw from Suarez when Messi was not on the field was Suarez moving back and trying to take on Messi's role. And that shouldn't be the way to go. You know, Suarez needs to continue to be a goal scorer for this team. His role can change when Messi's not on the field because he's not going to be able to fulfill everything that Messi does for this team. Well, well what's the lineup on Wednesday? What's the lineup? What, what do we think we see from Inter Miami? I think that's, that's going to be, let's start there because... Mm-hmm. Again, you know, with Tata Martino, it's, there's been, like you said, there's been injuries. Has he made some questionable decisions? Absolutely. But I think that you also have to take into account that they've been really focusing on this series, right? Like this this last game with the team they put out there against the Rapids, I mean, you could clearly tell that there was no prioritizing the MLS regular season yeah. at that point, which is understandable given the context yeah. of the of the of the of the series. El contexto de, del momento. Of the moment. So, that being said, what lineup will we see? Because none of the Fantastic Four started on Saturday night. So we expect all four of them to be in the lineup on Wednesday. Or at least we expect that. But who else? Who else will join them? Drake, Calendar, and Goal? They're playing yeah. the back four, right? They're going to play 4-3-3. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, who makes up that back thing on the defense? We got Chelo Wiggins. Aviles and Freire and Jordi Alba. Yeah, that that's that's a no brainer right there. Okay, in the midfield you're gonna have Busquets, Diego Gomez, and no uh, David Ruiz, no David Ruiz. He's no, out no with the David red card. Ruiz. Um, you know we know Gressel is playing. Now I don't know if since Robert Taylor might not be available, or will not be available. He's not going to be available. He's not going to be available. I remember Campana might not be available as well. He came up came off with an injury as well. So we just need to find the right spot. Well, there's no right spot for Gresso, but you know what Tata thinks is the right spot. Um so I don't know if he plays in the middle. You know? He he well, might if, take if on If he doesn't play in the role. middle, if he doesn't play in the middle, then who plays in the middle? Hmm. You think Benham might be ready? Because I saw him yesterday, and he played 45 minutes with the second team. Could he get a start and maybe give Tata 60 minutes? It's a big ask. That's a big ask. I think Russell starts, man. I think Russell starts in that. No, Russell that. starts. I, no, so I think I think he starts in that midfield. I think he starts you in think the starts in the middle. I, and I, I think up top you might see something like Suarez, Messi on the right. Franco Negri on the left. I liked what I saw from Franco Negri in this game. In the if game. that's the case, I will flip it, though. And then I will have Negri play as a left back and then switch Diego Gomez to the right side and have Jordi Alba play in front of Negri. And that way you put Gresso on the right side. like he So you have Jordi Alba playing as a winger? I don't see that happening. What happened in the second half against uh, not a winger, but you know, you know, you know how it is with Tata. You know when they, def- you know, it's going to be 
when they play defense, it's going to be a different formation. When they attack, it's going to be an, a, a, another situation. I, listen, man, I, th- I think Franco Negri, I don't know if he was in Tata Martino's plans, but I think after this game that he just showed against the Rapids, I think he's definitely earned more minutes. And given, again, the lack of uh, overall options, I think he's a strong candidate to start this game. I liked what I saw from him, man. I liked how, how direct he was. Um, he brought different a different element to the team that we haven't seen at times uh, this year. Can he combine? Can he, you know, get get uh, some combination passes going? Absolutely, but he's also much more direct and more of a threat in that way. Not scared to take players on. Not scared to did, try to go, go on the dribble. He whipped in, he whipped in beautiful crosses. He whipped in a lot of dangerous crosses from the left. The yeah, they, they need goals. Problem. They need goals. They need goals. So. I mean, of course, you have to take the defensive mindset into, or you have to, you have to take uh, defensive responsibilities and take that into account here. But they have to score if they need goals. I think Franco Negri gets a start. Yeah, it, it would be interesting. It would be interesting. I have a problem with Franco Negri relying with him on 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 the attack because. He, I don't think he's that sharp just yet, and um, the decision. Who, who else was it? Who else? Who else? No, just like what I told you. you know, when you brought Franco Nate into the into the conversation, it, it made a little bit more sense. I, I would go. I would change the the the, the back four, and and I would do Cello, Aviles, Freire, and Negri, and then you know the three in the middle would be Diego Gomez on the right, uh, Busi in the middle and Jordi on the left. And then the three at the top will be Messi on the left, Suarez uh, in the middle and on the right side against my wish, Gresser. I think that's I think moving too many that. pieces though. I think you're moving too many pieces. I think you're moving. I'm too not many moving any now. pieces at all. If you really think about it, just, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Just Gomez is now playing from left to right. Messi's playing oh, on the left. Gomez when you know, when you know the on the right. I mean, we've seen Gomez. Actually, Gomez Gomez might be a better player on the right side. You know, he he might be a lot more comfortable there. But Thanks, you know, um, it's I, I think there's there's just Island Jose really tank seven two one. Tank seven two one gives you a yellow card, Island Jose. No way, this is too early. I'm gonna get the second one in honor of David Ruiz in a few <laughs> minutes. Uh, I, I think I think Franco Negri is at the start. Uh, did you like what you saw from him in this last game? No, not really. Yes, yes, I like Franco Negri. I I really like him. But you know, it's I mean, it's, one thing is what we like, and then you know, a completely different scenario what Tata um, sees on the field because he Tata did mention in the post match press conference that you know it was not the plan for Jordi Alba to play in front of uh, Franco Negri. They didn't want Franco Negri to play a full ninety minutes. It was just uh, Afonso's injury. Um, you know, that forced them to leave Franco on the field and, and bring in uh, Alba. So, you know, that could make that could lead you to believe that they haven't worked on this. So, who knows? You know, maybe sometimes this, this is how things work out. And Tata gets a look at it, likes it. And, you know, that might be the way to go against Monterrey. The one thing that I like, though, is that, you know, you're bringing an experienced player and that knows how to deal with those type of matches. So... That would be another thing to consider other than bringing, you know, a player like Afonso, per se, you know, which could be a, uh, a choice as well. I would rather have um, Alba in the middle than Afonso. And I like Afonso, but I, I just think this this is too big a game for him. Yeah, and I don't – is he healthy enough to play? Came out of this last game with – with an injury, yeah, but he, when he was talking to us, and uh, he seemed fine, but but he is he able fine. to? But is he able to start? You know, I mean, I don't know that. I don't know. I think there's question yeah. about that. If Andrea, Andre, well, it says Andre, but Andre Yanis is seven, <laughs> which is Andrea, Andreita Yanis, our co-host. Uh, he see that. Oh, she's in the comments so, section. So you says, hide messages. You hide the comments. This no, is so what it is. I, no, I think she's just saying, Franco, read my comments. I scrolled looking for another comment. No, she Andrea. has been sending comments, and you don't want to read them. Incorrect, sir. I'm looking at no, all the comments. That is not incorrect. Oh no, here. No, I do. I did find one. Sorry. Oh, there you go. There you go. This is Andrea Yana submitting her lineup in the comment section. Drake Calendar, Marcelo, Weigand, Thomas Aviles, Nicolas Freire, Jordi Alba, Grasso Busquets, Negri, Afonso, Messi, Suarez. So uh, Andrea thinks Negri starts in the middle, just like you. 
No, I think I think Negri starts on the wing on the left. But she's leaving Gomez out. She leaves Gomez out, which I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. Afonso, Afonso, while he's been good, I don't, I don't think he gets a start. They, they need as much experience as possible. After talked about, you know, experience during the post game press conference against the Rapids, um, and how that's a factor in, in all of these things. And, and you know, he's talking about the David Ruiz red card um, indirectly, and talked about experience. So I think they're going to go as experienced as possible. Even though they'll have young players on the, on the field at some positions, this is going to be as experienced a team as possible because they're going down to Mexico. It's going to be hostile territory. Inter Miami has to know how, not only how to get back into this game, but have to manage the moments, manage you know when they're under waves of pressure. They have to be as solid across the board as possible. We've talked about Messi, right? If Inter Miami is going to have any chance at Turning this thing around, Messi's going to have to be involved on the score sheet. I just don't see Messi not having a good game and Inter Miami advancing. I just don't, I don't see that happening. How much of how much pressure is there on Tata Martino in this game? How much of a say is he going to have? He's a little bit hamstrung in terms of his options, especially when it comes to the bench. But how does how much of a factor will it be for him to get everything that he can do correctly from the starting lineup? To the tactics, in-game management, substitutions. I mean, how big of a factor is it for him? He's going to get, I'm sure, a very hostile reception. Uh, Inter Miami set to travel down to Mexico on Tuesday, and they'll spend the night south of the border before the game. After the game, then they travel. I don't know if they travel directly on Wednesday night or if they wait till Thursday morning, but then they'll head uh, to Kansas City. Wednesday so, night. So they'll travel after the game. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're not spending. Uh, they're not overly spending time in Mexico for for any reason. So, how much of the game, how much of the result, will depend on Tata Martino's tactics, management, etc. You know, it's interesting because unless he comes up with something crazy like the like the four three three against Colorado Rapids, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. I don't think that that's going to be. Because you just can't change the team a lot when you have Messi on the field. You know, this team is already built for him. And we have already seen the the best version of Inter Miami when Messi is available and when Messi is on the field. So I, I don't think he's going to be that big a factor. Although, you know, if you're an Inter Miami fan, I think you have to acknowledge that Tata did a good job in the first leg. You know, he did surprise Monterrey with the 4-5-1. Um, you know, it seemed like he found a way to, you know, control Monterrey. So I think tactically he knows the team and he knows what's best for Inter Miami and how to hurt Monterrey. So I don't think he's going to be that big a factor. I don't think he's going to be that big a factor. I think everything, you know, relies on Messi. If Messi's on and he has a good night, I think, uh, into Miami's moving on, and Tata, you know, it's just gonna be, he, he's gonna do the obvious. Alexis Rosales Ruiz in the comment section says, "All we need is Di Maria or Neymar and Sergio Ramos. That would complete oh. the team." <laughs> Morelia Coromoto Zurita, first time commenter on Miami Total Football Radio, the show. You guys did not think that I would not say the R is being rolled on the show. I didn't do it in the beginning. I was late waiting for it for later on in the pod. It took us almost 30 minutes, but there it is. But anyway, Morelia Coromoto Zurita says, vamos Messi, vamos Inter, ala, 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 la remontada. Okay, we got a chance. We had a comment from Morelia here. Uh, it's a tough task. It's a tough task. Uh, the, the environment is going to be hostile. It's, it's going to be very interesting. We thought the first leg was going to be a doozy. This game's going to be even more of a doozy. It's going to be even more fascinating to watch and follow and cover just because of the implications of everything, how the first leg went, the environment, what Inter Miami is up against. Every decision and every play is going to matter that much more. What do you think, Jose? What kind of game will we see overall, right? Monterrey has a two-to-one lead. They have two away goals. Inter Miami has to come out and attack. But that's going to I leave space in behind. Yeah, no, I don't think they will. I don't think they will come out and attack. I think they're going to take their time. You know, they're going to... I think Messi's going to dictate the tempo of the game for Inter-Miami. I think this is this is the... 
I have no doubt this is the biggest game for, for Messi with Inter Miami. There, there's no doubt about it. Um, this is the toughest challenge as well. Um, so I think they, they're going to go the, the way Messi wants them to go. And they know that they just can get into a back and forth situation where they are running up and down the field because that's not going to be beneficial to Messi. They they need to take their time. They need to be solid defensively in the first 15, 20 minutes just because, you know, the excitement for Monterrey is going to be there and you don't want to concede early. So I think for Messi, it's going to be important to know how to manage the game. I think he'll be able to do that. Enter Miami will start, you know, trying to play solid defense and then, you know, they're, they're, they're going to try to pick their spots and get that first goal. And that's the most important thing. You know, that's really, that really is going to tell us how many chances Inter Miami has of moving on? Whenever they get that first goal, if they do that, then you know they're, they're going to have to find a way to figure out and get the second one. But that first goal is important, and you don't have to get that first goal early on. I mean, it would be ideal, but you don't have to get it early in the first 10, 15 minutes because it doesn't mean that Monterrey is going to relax and just step back. You know, Monterrey is, is going to be aggressive, so they, they have to be aggressive um, on, on Wednesday night. Do we expect um, a brawl? Do we expect a, you know? Do we expect a chippy match? Right, intensity is going to be high. So do we expect? I don't want to say a brawl like in terms of there's going to you know there's going to be a melee. I mean, hey, after last week's post game skirmish, maybe, but that's not what I was was going at there. I mean, do you think we'll see a pit bull fight there in the midfield in the bat in terms of the game and how it's played? Is this going to be a game with a lot of chances, free flowing soccer on both ends, or is this going to be a dog fight. There we go. That's what I was looking for. A dog fight. Yeah. Mm. I think Inter Miami is going to try badly to win this game. And that's the way they're going to respond to everything that happened after the game here in, in Fort Lauderdale. I'll give you some information about whatever happened after Monterrey arrived. After the match. When Monterrey arrived in Nuevo León. There was a concern from Monterrey, members of the coaching staff, that, you know, the talking would extend too much because obviously it's a talking point for the media. And the whole thing will serve as motivation to Messi. And they have huge respect for Messi. But they have, I don't know if fear is the right word, but some like that. For a Messi that's upset and that wants revenge. So, having said that, I don't think that the players would continue to build on that. They're just going to try to play the game. Obviously, if it, if it if you know if it gets physical, then so be it. And you know, this we're going to have a physical game, but they want to step back a little bit from whatever whatever happened. They just want to win the game or tie the game, or lose the game <clears> by one and move on. But they don't want to continue to poke Lionel Messi until you know he gets overly frustrated, and then you know what can happen. He scores three on you, and you're out of the competition. David Figueroa in the comment section. The comment section. Arbitro a pitar es mexicano. Well, he's not. He's Salvadorian, but he did help Mexico a lot um, recently. I'm Honduran, so I don't know if I should say that, but it did. <laughs> um, it was the referee for the, um, <clears throat> what was it? For the Copa America, uh, Nations League game, where Mexico needed a goal and he gave like 16 minutes of, uh, 19 minutes, I think it was. 19 minutes of extra time <laughs> until Mexico scored and he finished the match right, up, right after it. So... I don't think Barton is necessarily pro Mexican teams. I just think he's. Ayudó a México ir a Copa América, says David Figueroa. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, although they Mexico, Mexico they, they still had a chance with the at the you know they they could have. I I don't think he helped Mexico. He just rather eliminated Honduras from the whole thing. Well, something something crazy is going to happen in this game. Something crazy. Something we aren't even talking about right now. Que ni nos estamos planteando en este momento. It's just, that's just the way these CONCACAF games end up going. Something unforeseen, 
unpredicted is going to happen. I don't know what it is, but or uh, sorry, on Wednesday, I don't know what it is, but that's that's what I believe. It, t- it tends to go that way. I mean, no, nobody predicted a David Ruiz red card in the in the first leg, especially when it reminded me it was up one zero. Something is going to happen in this game. I don't know what it is. We'll see. Now, Inter Miami, like we mentioned, has not left South Florida yet. They will leave on Tuesday morning. I'm curious to see the welcome that they get down there. Now, again, they're limiting as much time as possible being in Mexico. Understand that. But they're still going to spend a day there. There's still going to be a match day minus one press conference tomorrow. Tata Martino is definitely persona non grata in Mexico because of his stint with the national team and how poorly that went regardless of how much responsibility you believe he shoulders for that or not. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, we're we're going to see something on social media about their arrival. You know, Mexican media, um, when it comes to football, when it comes to soccer, they're all encompassing and they'll talk about it from sunrise to sundown. It's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of coverage and we're going to see a lot of images on social media by Inter Miami's arrival to the hotel. They're yeah. going to go, they're going to, uh, van a repasar El campo, they're going to go to the field and see, you know, the, the, the pitch that they'll be playing on uh, on game day. So they'll, they'll do some work there or at least, you know, get familiar with it, see where the divots are, see how it, how it plays, um, if it's long grass, short grass, thick grass, etc. So what do you expect from tomorrow's welcome for Inter Miami? I, I imagine they will be heavily guarded. Of course, there will be a lot of security, naturally. But in terms of the atmosphere and – the day before, the setting the tone or setting the scene, what do you think Inter Miami is in for down in Mexico? Well, you know, I think tomorrow it's going to be more for the Messi fans. You know, the people that want to see Messi, they want to – they. I mean, people are very hopeful. You know, they believe if they go to the hotel or they go outside of the airport, you know, he might come out of the bus and sign a few autographs. They could couple pictures, which we know it's not going to happen, but you know, people are still hopeful and you know, you can't take that away from people. So I think that's, that's what, what's going to happen tomorrow. I think, you know, the hostility will start on Wednesday night. Um, plus they are arriving early. You know, they, they, I think the, They'll be arriving at 9.15, 9.15 Miami time, 11.15 for um, uh, Monterrey. So it's going to be a long day. Um, Training session is not until 7, if I'm not mistaken, or 8, 8, and and the press conference at 7. So is Tata Tata going to get grilled tomorrow? I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, I think they hate him, but I don't think they hate him as much to go um, and wait for him, you know, when when they know they're probably not going to be able to see him. They know they're going to see him on Wednesday night. And that's yeah, but if it, remi- if it reminds me wins, then they're not, then you don't get the real chance opportunity to grill him. I think tomorrow, if you're well, Mexican before media, the you- game, that usually happens before the game. You know, after the game is about celebrating or whatever happens. If, if you don't move on, then, you know, you're frustrated about it. But that is going to get all the love, love, before the game. Once he comes out, you know, for warm-ups or just before the game, that's where he's... I'm talking about the media, Jose. I'm talking about the media, because we're going to see the interview tomorrow. We're going to see the press conference, right? So is that is he going to feel some heat there from Mexican media? I fully believe so. I fully believe that there's going to be some questions that will be angled in a certain way to try to go at him and um, try to get under his skin. I fully, I fully expect that. Fully expect that. By the way, RM, RM in the comment section says, hablen en español pendejos. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let me, let, me, let me do that again. RM dice en el comentario, hablen en español pendejos. All right. Um, we'll, we try to incorporate some Spanglish into the pod, but obviously English, English we go first here, predominantly. Well, of course, we try to get the Spanish, the Spanish in, of course. So you don't Franco think no, Franco no quiere hacer en español. Just so you know, RM. Para que sepa, RM. Franco... That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. It's hard. Like, mira, mira. Esta es la verdad. Es tan difícil sacar a José y Andrea para un show en inglés que es imposible hacerlo en español consistentemente. Es imposible. 
No es posible. No es posible, no es posible. <laughs> so if you don't speak Spanish, don't understand Spanish, what I just said is that it's hard enough to get Jose and Andrea on a show in English once a week. So imagine trying to do it in Spanish. It's, it's practically impossible. It's not possible. As I say, no es posible. Como posible? It's not. Um, anyway, all right. Andrea here in the comment section said, they're going to ask him about the telenovela. Dr. Martino was asked about that after the game against the Rapids, and he he didn't bite. He said, you know, we're going to stick with our posture. The team hasn't really commented on the post-game uh, skirmish, the post-game, I want to call it a fight because it wasn't a fight, but the post-game standoff that happened at Chase Stadium. They've stayed very tight-lipped, but Tata was asked, and Tata just didn't bite. Um, he said they're just going to focus on, on the game itself, on the game itself. All right. Jose, we're 40 minutes in. Time to do a little prediction. Does Inter Miami get it done? Do they live to fight another day in the CONCACAF Champions Cup? Or is this it? Is this it for them in the competition that they thought was the most important one for them this year? What do you think? And before you tell me your prediction, before you tell me your prediction, I Actually, think I'll, I'll keep the follow up question. I'll keep the follow up question for after. But go ahead. I think if Messi starts, they they move on. I think they win. They win. They win the series. I think they uh, they are a completely different team with Messi. I mean, everybody, everybody around around him gets better, and so you know, I think in Concacaf there's still no competition for Messi. You know, and we're talking about Monterrey, one of the top teams. You know, there's a lot of money in that roster. Um, they have a good coach. They have they have a, a significant advantage, really. And I still believe if Messi is on the field, they will be moving on. Interesting. Because normally, you're a bit more pessimistic when it comes to predictions and the team. Where I was a bit more, lately anyway, I've been a little bit more optimistic. And in this one, I think our roles have reversed. I don't think they get it done. I think to, uh, Wednesday will be the end of the line for them in this competition. They'll talk to, about the reasons why. Tata Martino has already talked about injuries and not having a full roster. And I guess that does come into play here. But nonetheless, you get paid to get results. And you get paid to win these games. I think they'll fall short, man. I think they'll fall short. I think they'll make it interesting. I think Messi will score or create a goal, and that'll make it interesting. But I just don't think that they will have enough on the day. I think defensively, they're bound to give something up. They're playing in Mexico. Monterrey's going to have all the momentum behind it. They know Inter Miami has to come out at some point. Look, you said you think Inter Miami won't come out. If Inter Miami doesn't come out, Monterrey can just knock the ball around and then be – pretty risk-free, right? They can not have to push numbers forward. They don't have to take chances. What do they need to take chances for? They're up two goals. Inter Miami has to score. Inter Miami has to score twice. So I don't, I just don't see Inter Miami doing enough. David Ruiz's red card. We already talked about it last week in good, in good detail. I think that that was very damning to the team's overall chances of moving on in this series. Yeah. Because not only did they give up a goal, they gave up two and they lost the game. And that is, it's a mountain to climb down in Mexico. I just don't see that. I don't see them winning what? We have to win 2 0 to get through, 3 to 1 to get through. I just don't see that happening. Or it, 2 could, 1 could happen? to, to two extend one the game and go. Yeah. I just don't see, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. I think they'll score, but I think Monterrey, Monterrey is also going to score. And Inter is going to have to push at some point. That's going to leave spaces in behind. And I think this will be it for Inter Miami. If they do it through, it'll be it'll be uh, an impressive achievement to go down to Mexico and, and turn this series around. Again, Messi, I think, has to be very, very involved for that to happen. But if I had to put money on it, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would not uh, take that wager. I, I would think Monterrey gets through. Monterrey gets through. If Inter Miami does not get through, Jose, because we if they go through, then there's another series to talk about. They've extended their they're running the competition one step closer to the final. If they don't get through, 
what is the analysis of their run in this competition? What what would you make of them falling short of what they said was one of their biggest goals? What what would we be talking about? Because there's always, I'm sure there's gonna be talking about Tata, you know, people being like Tata needs to go, he didn't get the job um, done, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But what what is it really what would we really say after Wednesday's game if they well, don't get through? First off, I don't think people will um will will want Tata to leave just because they're out of um, Champions Cup. You know, I think the biggest disappointment for me in, in in particular when it comes to the Champions Cup, it's not necessarily from the team itself. It's from the lacking atmosphere and acknowledgement for international competition in South Florida. I mean, the stadium was, I mean, the attendance was a lot better on Saturday against Colorado Rapids than against Nashville or against Monterrey, which to me, it's disappointing. And I, and I get it that people need to get to buy another ticket. I get all that because it's not included in the season ticket package. But, you know, in Mexican stadiums, per se, you know, a lot of people need to buy another ticket as well for these games, and yet stadiums are full. So there's an acknowledgement. So that's the biggest disappointment for me. So I don't think, since people don't care about this and don't know exactly what this means in South Florida, then I don't think that the, I think he'll win against Kansas City on Saturday and people will forget about it. So, but overall, like, what's the analysis, though, right? Like, I think it all comes down to Messi. If Messi's not on the field, then, you know, they are completely different teams. So my analysis would be... Um, but what's the know, analysis again, of them falling in the competition? I what think they have a perfect excuse. What would it say about Inter Miami? What would it say about Inter Miami? The team that was, you know, trying to... Competing it, it would say the that World Cup. it would say that with without Messi, they probably don't deserve to be in this competition with this roster right now. That's what it would say, you know. I mean, they're here because they won League's Cup, and who basically won League's Cup for them? Messi did. So, and and without him, they're still, you know, not at this level. Aside from them winning against Nashville, which you know it's an MLS team. But now when you needed to compete against the top Mexican team, Messi was not there. And yes, you had Suarez, but you couldn't find a way to, you know, let Suarez take over and shine and, you know, help this team, which is something that maybe people thought he would do once Messi was not available when, well, we now know that that is not the case. And I know there's injuries as well, but, you know, I think with Messi... They have an opportunity to move on, even with all the injuries and Benjana being 100% and Facuna being available and Redondo getting hurt. I think they still can move on because Messi is on the field. Andrea Yanis back in the comment section says, I don't know why Andrea couldn't be on, but she's in the, very active in the comment section. She says, <laughs> Fracaso, Pachuca solo compró Rondón y es, golea, es el goleador y los tiene en semifinales. Inter Miami compró supuestamente para ganar el torneo. So Andrea... In Spanish, I guess she took RM or RMS comment to heart and says, uh, it's a failure. Pachuca bought Solomon Rondon and he's the leading goal scorer and has uh, has Pachuca in the semifinals. Inter Miami supposedly bought players to win this whole tournament. I think it's a massive disappointment if they don't get through this this leg. And again, yes. I don't think or this series, and I don't think that they will. Uh, I think this this is where the, the bus ends or the, the ride ends. Or the bus stops, um, and then yes, the, the the season will go on. You know they'll have other tournaments to play for, but I think it's going to really bring into question whether this team is as good as they've made themselves out to be, or if it's just been puro marketing, which we can have our opinion on. Yeah. Um, we know we know what Messi's capable of. We know the big names are there, but was the rest of the team really? talented enough in a salary cap structure to push this team further. And, and they're going to have to win the league to make an argument of this being a successful season. If they don't win the league, I mean, this is a complete failure. I mean, and there's 
no way to to look at it any other way because League's Cup at this point is meaningless. Um, so, but yeah, I think if Messi plays, he move. They move on. Interesting. I mean, he's going to play. He's definitely playing. Yeah. So I think that they'll, they'll they'll be moving on unless something weird happens. Well, give me a score. What's the score? I think they win three one. Three one. Any questionable refereeing decisions going in their favor? Probably yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, would you be surprised? No, you know come on! You don't even have I wouldn't to be think surprised. about it that long. You know, you wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't mean, be surprised. No. Do you think CONCACAF wants Messi to move on? Do you think CONCACAF wants America, Inter Miami, at Estadio Azteca in the final? Do you think they want that? I, mean, I think they do. I think they do. So they still have Tigres on the next round, but you know, which would be very exciting. And if Inter Miami doesn't move on and Columbus doesn't move on, it's an all Mexican semifinal, isn't it? Yeah, four teams. So I wouldn't be surprised. Let's just put it that way. I think Inter Miami. Ties. Two to two. Two to two. They'll get the two away goals they need, but they're going to give up two and they'll fall four to three on aggregate. It just won't be enough. It just won't if be they enough. if if it's two to two, they they will be one goal away from moving on, right? Because they would right, have three they, goals, they would, three they would road be. goals. So okay. three two might work in favor of Inter Miami, but I say three one, three one. I say two two. Close but no cigar. Close but no cigar. And then everything will go towards. The MLS regular season. MLS if if we ask Andrea Netflix. right now, she'll probably say 4 1 Monterrey. <laughs> <laughs> Very likely. You know it. You Very know likely. it. Very likely. <laughs> um, all right. Jose, before we wrap up the show, very quickly, we'll just talk about this last weekend's game very quickly. Inter Miami really? was the Colorado Rapids 2 to 2, 2 to 2 draw. This was Inter Miami's starting lineup. We talked about how the game went. Colorado Rapids scored. Late in the first half, penalty kick after a Ryan Saylor foul. Leo Messi comes off the bench, scores the equalizer in the 57th minute off a great cross from Franco Negri. Leo Afonso scores his first MLS goal a few minutes later, but Inter Miami gets caught on the counter late on and gives up an 88th minute equalizer. Cole Bassett, Cole Bassett, 2 2 draw. This was Inter Miami starting lineup clearly with an eye towards this Wednesday's game. It was a 4. One four one. Terry Calendar and goal. David Ruiz as the right back. Brian Saylor, Noah Allen, your two center backs. Franco Negri as the left back. Thomas Aviles as the defensive midfielder. Julian Gressel and Lawson Sunderland in the midfield with the, with Thomas Aviles. And then Schneider Borgelin and Leo Afonso on the wings. Leo Campana up top. Leo Campana left this game with an injury. So he's likely, he's likely not going to be playing on Wednesday. Likely. I don't know. We don't have that confirmed yet, but. Uh, doesn't seem like to. doesn't seem like Jose, anything, any takeaways from this game? Well, I'll give you one because we're going to hear from him. We're going to hear from him. Franco Negri, again, thought was one of the big bright spots in this. Nah, fue un proceso muy largo. Eh, una lesión de esa magnitud se hace muy frustrante para el jugador, pero eh, es la mentalidad lo que te lleva a superar cada momento. Eh, gracias a Dios hoy pude tener mi primer partido de vuelta con el primer equipo, entonces estoy muy contento. La verdad que no era esperado con el resultado, pero bueno, hay que como equipo seguir trabajando en lo, lo que debemos mejorar para, para bueno, ya pensar en el partido del miércoles, que es muy importante para nosotros. Bright spot, right? Yes, bright spot. Yes, it was just good to see him back. I mean, I think that's the most important thing. Whether he's ready for what's coming up on Wednesday, then that remains to be seen. But obviously, you know, he's a pro's pro. I mean, from Franco and Eddie, you only expect uh, uh, good things. I think we saw it, you know, since the first day he arrived in South Florida. So 
yeah, it was it, it was it was positive. It was positive to see him back. Messi, of course, was the other talking point there. This team needs to find a way to snap out of this funk, though, because they're not winning games. Clearly, they've been focusing on the Champions Cup, but they need to. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's. I don't think games. I don't think it's I don't think it's fostering a good environment, man. I don't think like in, I think in that locker room, there's definitely especially with where the Cuatro Fantásticos or the Fantastic Four, they're used to winning, they're used to being at a certain level. I think it's, like you can clearly, if they were getting into it with Monterrey's players or Monterrey staff. After last week's game, I mean, they're pretty frustrated. They're pretty frustrated. I think it's frustrated, but just for for two, three hours, and then you know they move on, and then you know next game, whenever that happens. And I asked Leo Alfonso they, after the game, what was Tata Martino's message to the to the team? Leo Alfonso just turned professional player. Looks over to the PR person. To try to get his way out of the question, and the PR person's like, "No, oh, all right, next question." I think. I mean, I think. I think there's. If you look at Noah Allen, you can watch this on Miami Total Football's YouTube page. If you watch his interview, his demeanor post game. I don't know if you agree with this. I think you do because I think we talked about it in the mix yeah. zone. His demeanor seemed very down, very, very. How do I say it? It was just frustrated. Very dejected. Very dejected. Yeah, but I think, you know, I th I think it all comes down to what happens on Wednesday. You know, if if they happen to move on, they they wouldn't care uh, about the last four games. Look, if you look at the standings in MLS, I'll tell you the whole story. But they're not playing with a whole lot of confidence right now. That's what I'm saying. Like literally, Messi has to have his Messi magic tomorrow for this team to have a chance to get through. But he has to. wouldn't wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree that when Messi was on the field, the moment he comes on in the second half, it's a completely different team. It's Absolutely, a different I, team. I agree with that. So you know, it, Messi can lead the way tomorrow. Messi can lead the way, and it's not like it's all by himself. You know, he, there's Busi, there's Jordi, and there's Suarez. You know, those three guys, they they could care less about not winning an MLS. They know how to win this those games and. I just, I, I think it can be a lot more frustrating for players like Noah Allen and Leo Afonso than it is for the Cuatro Fantásticos. I don't I, know I about think, that, man. I don't know about I, that. I, I, don't, I don't think they're very concerned about not winning against Colorado Rapids or New York City FC. They probably don't even remember that game. Yeah, I don't think that's not the big deal. I'm not saying that game in particular. I'm thinking just the overall stretch. The overall stretch of not picking up wins and just not having that positivity within the group. I think I think they got to find a way. But probably won't be on Wednesday. Probably have to be over the weekend. Speaking of over the weekend, we will try to be back after the Monterrey game. I can't make any promises because, again, host is hard enough to get for one show in English. So two in one week in the span of a few days might be tough. Might be tough, but we'll try. We will try to have some post game reaction, ideally on Thursday, to talk about the game and preview the match against Sporting Kansas City. Of course, we'll have our big takeaways win, lose, or draw for Inter Miami uh, and what their fate is in this Champions Cup if we are able to get a show going. Maybe Andrea will leave the comment section and return in front of the camera. Yes, that would, that I would think be... Andrea might be back on Thursday. I think we'll be covering <laughs> the Marlins, the almighty Marlins on Friday night. So. Yeah, Thursday. Way to way to obligarla to be on there. Way to force her to make no, sure she comes might. on. He, he, uh, oh, so you. The way you said it, though. The way you said it was like, yeah, I think she could. He sounds, he sounds pretty optimistic there. <laughs> All right. I don't. I don't want to say anything else. I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah, you. She already said that you were dragging her. I saw that comment in the comment section. Sounds. Sounds one two three says Messi holds grudges. Well, let's hope does, that's the yes. case. Let's hope that's the case. Uh, if you're into Miami. Or an Inter Miami fan because you need a motivated Messi. You need him pulling the strings tomorrow, or sorry, on Wednesday. I keep saying tomorrow on Wednesday to have any chance at turning this around in, in Monterrey. It's going to be a, an interesting matchup. It's going to be fascinating to watch. We'll see how it goes. But all right, we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. Then we're going to be shorter on this pod. So we've we've, we've cut off 10 minutes, shaved off 10 minutes, and we covered this game and uh, or previewed this game in, I think, in good detail. So we'll leave it there. Thank you guys for joining us in the comments section, of course. 
We will be back hopefully later in the week to recap the match against Monterrey and preview the weekend's tilt against Sporting Kansas City. So, for Jose Armando, I am Franco Penizo. You have been listening and watching, or watching, Miami Tudor Football Radio, the show. We will talk to you guys again in a few days.